away, uh, you know, with the right weight and getting back to the basics technique-wise, all that came into play. After what happened with how Tyson Fury somehow got up, did you know Dominique Brazil was out for the count, basically? Um, I think, I mean, I, I, I thought he was gone. And, and to his credit, he, he did as good a job as he as humanly possibly he could have done to try to get up. Um, but I'm glad they stopped the fight because uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't gonna be good. You know, it, it's, it, it was it, it was it was time. <laughs> and I'm glad he's good, you know, and I'm glad he's out. Thank you. So being knocked out like that and couldn't get out and Deontay saying that he could have you know could have killed somebody in that ring. Do you think if they would have continued that fight it would have been some serious damage to but anytime you got a guy like Deontay Wilder and you're not in a uh, proper state of mind, you know, you're half concussed and or maybe fully concussed and he's coming at you. Especially, and that's the thing people don't understand, you know, oh, he's wild, he's this, he's that. But if you really look at it, it's only when a guy's hurt that Deontay throws unorthodox punches. And you got to understand, when you're hurt, it's like being dizzy. When you're dizzy, you can defend against punches that you've seen a thousand times a lot better than you can defend. Like if you're thinking like this, and all of a sudden stuff's coming from here and here and here, very hard to defend as opposed to, all right, I'm gonna stay in the pocket, I'm gonna shell up, and maybe I can pick off enough of these to clear my head. With Deontay, that ain't happening, you know? He's coming from, from, from anywhere and everywhere, and there's really no answer for it. So that's the part that the general public doesn't get. Oh, he's wild. They're not seeing the one-two that knocks to burn down. You know, in the second fight, they're not seeing the punch that you know. If, if Brazil got up and Deontay went at him unorthodox, they would have forgotten what you just saw, which was technically very sound one-two. Jay, break down the knockout. Um, why was he able to land that punch? Well, he had him hurt, and then 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 he he got a little bit you know anxious trying to get. Then he settled back, and then to Dominic's credit, he really fought back. And then Deontay kind of settled back down. He got back. You know, all right, we're back. We're gonna do thing. And he, just, he saw it, his mind picked up on the angle. There's a million things going on in a fight that the average uh, viewer probably doesn't see just in terms of spacing and timing and distance. And that's what Shelly was talking about. Like he, he, he lined him up, Deontay was just like a half step to Deontay's right, which the angle was just, just it wouldn't have been, the angle wouldn't have been there. It wasn't there three seconds before. It wasn't, wouldn't have been there two seconds after. It was just that, there it is kind of thing. And that's, when that, that's, when that's that landed, I, did you know? I, I, I really, I knew, you know, when Brazil came out and he got hit, and he said, you ain't got nothing or whatever it was, he said. Then he got hit again, he said, you know, there ain't nothing to that. I was like, okay, this, this is not going to last long because, because that's the way punching power is. They say getting hit by George Foreman, which is kind of a slower, they say getting hit by George Foreman was like getting hit by a Mack truck at 35 miles an hour. Like you feel every inch of the pain. Getting hit by Mike Tyson, it's like getting hit by a bullet. It doesn't hurt, you just, you're just on the ground and your body doesn't work. You know, you can't get, you can't move. Deontay's more of the speed power, but when he hits you like to the body and things, it's more the George Foreman power. So he, he has a little bit of, the, of both of it. But what he hit Brazil with was the speed, the speed power. And it's just, you don't, you're don't you just on the ground and nothing works. Hey, so now manager hat, yeah. what's the most likely fight that's next? You know, we're gonna see that everybody says they want to fight until you get them to the table. And I mean, look at look at Joshua. We had 50, offered $50 million and he turned, and proved it was real to their own. They, they agreed that that was real. Uh, I've never known Al Heyman and Shelly Finkel to be anything but real with money. But, Proved it was real and they said no. They offered us 15 and we said yes. The fight never happened. Well, that tells you right there that who wants to fight and who doesn't. So I don't know to answer your question. We're gonna see Shelly's working on some things and me and Shelly will be in touch about 15 times a day for the next week or so. And we'll, we'll, we'll make whatever the next call is, you know, what it is, whether it be Fury or whether it be uh, um, Joshua or whether it be uh, you know, a rematch with Ortiz or whether it be uh, Kalnaki or, you know, like the said, it's not a huge, huge division, so there's going to be opportunity. Can you speak now of the, the $100 million offer and as to why the uh, team passed on it? Well, I think, I think really what it was was mostly like Deontay betting on himself, kind of like Floyd did back in the day. Um, we had one offer that was from, you know, ESPN came in and that would have, uh, that side of the road would have uh, kind of tied us to Fury. <coughs> because he was already signed. Then DeZone came in and that would have tied us to Joshua because it's on that side of the road. 
But I told Deontay, uh, and, and he he was uh, way ahead of me on it, but he said, you know, I want to bet on myself and go my own way where I'm not tied into anybody else's plan. And I said, well, you got a great idea because, you know, when they build a condo at the beach, there's always about 10 houses they've got to buy, right? The guy in the last house that hasn't sold yet, he's got all the power. He, he, he gets what he wants if he sells it off. He gets what he wants. Deontay's the last house on the beach. We didn't get to see it tonight since it ended in the first round, but how much did Deontay prove himself fundamentally during this game? Oh, I thought I thought he, he came to me after the last fight. He said, I want to get back to the basics. I want to uh, to get back to the basics, get back to technique, and really go back to day one, and let's start you know really refining the technique. And I said, what every coach wants to hear, you know. So that was a that was a great idea. So actually, if you watch his right off the bat, his stance, uh, uh, his hand placement, everything right like ten, three seconds into the fight, I'm like we're good. Like we 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 are. He is doing exactly what he said he would do. He's a, such a freakishly good athlete that he can get away with things, and that's. Um, you know, he, he's right about that. He can he can do things wrong and it come out right. But what you have to wonder in doing that is, would an eight round fight have been a two round fight? Had you done things like tonight? You know, if he was getting away with things tonight, does that fight go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or whatever? But he, he came in with a game plan. He came in determined to, to do things technically correct. And he's always gonna be Deontay now, don't get me wrong. He's never, he's never gonna lose his unique hunches. He's never gonna lose the awkwardness that he has. That's what makes him effective. We never wanted to take the identity away from him. We just wanted him to zero in and hone in on some some of those basic fundamental things. Is this the ideal weight that, that you want Deontay? Yeah, I, I like I like him right in the mid 220s. I know he came in the last fight at 212, uh, and then the morning of the fight, uh, the night of the fight, 209. Probably by the time he knocked Fury down, 206, 205, right? Because he'd been sweating all night. So 225, really, 223, 224, 225 sounds really good to me because I think he has more fluid. Like he's 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 bigger, he's he's faster, he's uh, he just he has so much more energy when he's when he's taking care of his nutrition. What do you think is the ideal return uh, return time frame? Oh, I mean, we you know that's the great thing about boxing. He got in and he got out. So there's no reason to say we'll see you in 2020. I mean, I'm, I think we're good for September or October. I think so. I mean, we'll just take a month off and uh, everybody go do what all they need to do and we get back in camp. We're ready. Hey, Jeff, I'm ready. Excuse me. I'm not sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, another heavyweight was here at FAA Java. Deontay mentioned his competitor actually walking out of the ring. Do you see similarities between the two based on the few fights that he's had? I haven't, I haven't seen enough of FAA. I do know that Ronnie trains him. And anytime Ronnie Shields has trained somebody, you've always got to think that they're doing the right things. Because Ronnie's a tremendous trainer. In fact, uh, when I took over the training duties at Sky Boxing uh, and became the trainer, because I wasn't up until that point, I was like the resident sparring partner and promoter. But when my brother got out of boxing and I was going to take over the training duties, the first place I went was to uh, Houston and uh, had never met Ronnie before. And he's like, come on, we'll have fun. And the guy had welcomed me into his house and we went out and watched a pay-per-view fight and uh, met his family, went to the gym. And I'm sitting here the whole time writing you know, notes down and stuff and the things that I liked that they did, the things I would change and all that. Came back to town, but I'm the new trainer. Deontay Wilder walks in the door. So it's amazing how it all. So to answer your question, yeah, if Effie's, you know, Working with Ronnie, uh, he's 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 the real deal. He's a good fighter, and, um, and we'll see we'll see you know, what happens down the road. He's young, he's still got a ways to go in terms of building up. But he's got I think if he's with Ronnie and does what Ronnie says, he's got a tremendous future. Which fight next do you honestly think is the most likely? Man, I can answer that question better a week from now, but um, <laughs> I just don't know. I, you know, Shelly could tell me one thing tonight, and then tell me something totally different Tuesday or Wednesday, and then I get my input, and then we talk to Al. It could go a million ways, so I hate to say I hate to be on record to say it because I just don't know. Hey, Jay, this wasn't a good fight to judge the barometer on uh, the Wilder's development since the Fury fight. I mean, there was some rounds where I was a little, you know, I felt nervous about him in that fight. Have there been any changes or anything that you, you, you do differently in the gym or during No, we, we didn't change the team or anything. We just went back to the basics. That, that was the main thing is we got back. We literally got back to 
you know, hand placement and stance and the, the, the upper body movement and uh, starting and finishing everything in your stance and uh, finishing everything you throw and finish with a defensive movement so you're not there to get hit with a, with a receipt. But we went back to the basics and that was great. If he had these basics against Fury, would it have been a different fight? Um, I think he had basics against Fury, but I think the thing about the Fury fight is uh, he was so light and he wanted to pr impress so bad that he was pressing a little bit. But you got to remember that the IQ part of what Deontay was talking about, being a smart fighter, you got to remember, he scored two knockdowns in the last four rounds of the Fury fight. That tells you that like biomechanically and, and, and intelligently, he was figuring things out to be able to have two knockdowns. And it, not, it wasn't one and 12, it was nine and 12. So that tells you right there, he was figuring things out. No, no, no. Deontay's his own guy, and he knows what he's doing. And uh, I'm not, you know, it's it's a very it's out it's more of a partnership than it is. It's not like I tell Deontay what to do, and, and like you know, you're coaching a, a college athlete, or it's a professional thing. So it's much more a collaboration. I'll show Deontay what I see and tell him what I think and whatnot, and then he'll say, Yeah, yeah, but I can change that angle this way. This would be more effective. And I said, Show it to me. Show me what you're talking about. He'll show me. I'm like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Right? Yeah, and then we go back and forth like that. So it's it's like a collaborative uh, effort uh, between us. So there wasn't anything like that. But uh, we, if you watch the video, I'm interested to see the replay because one of our things we want to do is move to our right, which we thought would give us a good angle. If you have to move to the right, we can get the angle that we were looking for. Uh, and Brazil came right out and immediately moved this way which was their, apparently their game plan was to make Deontay move to Deontay's right, which was kind of, I was like, hey, this is great. Like, this is right up our alley. You know, they're doing right, they're doing, they're giving us just what we want. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm gonna yeah, yeah, to yeah, your own devices. Yeah. <laughs> leave, leave, you, leave you to the wolves. Yeah, you're like, good. The wolves. We're good. Good job. One more, Jay. Uh, yeah. Deontay was very vocal on um, what he thought the punishment should have been against Miller for the three what I see. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of the... I don't know, light slapping on this that he's got. Well, I mean, the, my, my point of view, and I don't I don't even know what Deontay said, but I'll just tell you what I think. Um, my point of view is it's such a dangerous sport. You know, you're, you're, it's not like if you cheat and take performance-enhancing drugs, swimming or running, you know, you maybe shave a couple of milliseconds off your time. You maybe cost the guy that you beat some endorsement dollars or whatever because you beat him. But... In boxing, you're literally enhancing your ability to hurt, to assault another guy. Can you imagine if Deontay had been on performance enhancing drugs when he hit Spielka or tonight or whatever? So it has to be taken very, very seriously. I don't think you should be able to fail two tests or three tests or, you know, and just and just be able to come back in six months when you probably wouldn't have fought in six months anyway. I don't, I don't think that that's right. I think um, you just have to, you have to it, it should be, it has to be, it has to be really serious for guys. If there's no punishment, people are never gonna change. And uh, we, we've seen that, we went through some things with the whole Bebekin situation uh, and, 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 and then Ortiz and, uh, um, and, and uh, Vacic, who's another guy that you probably haven't heard of and Deontay was supposed to fight, and so on. So it's uh, Deontay's 40 whatever fights plus the Olympics and all the trials, and he's never tested positive for anything. So, you know, that ought to tell you something. Hey, Jay, uh, every time I talk to you, you educate me a lot about history, and, and I know your history of collecting tapes and things like that. Uh, for the fight fans, even myself, is there a fight that we can compare this to a time? I know you're digging deep in the archive. I know you probably maybe have tons of fights. Just curious for someone maybe to go back and reference. A fight that would be similar to this one? Yes. Or, 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 or a case, uh, a study of a fighter, <laughs> the animal. It's the 15th quickest heavyweight title fight in history. Really? Yeah. I mean, wow. Joe, Joe Lewis, the second time he fought Max Schmeling, uh, and I'm bringing up Joe Lewis because he's an Alabama guy. But the second time he fought Max Schmeling, he uh, he went out with the kind of purpose that Deontay had tonight. Now Joe Lewis had the the, the world on his shoulders because of the whole World War II American versus German. They actually wound up being friends all throughout their lives. But that night, and the fact that Schmeling had knocked him out, uh, but the second fight Joe knocked him out in, in less than a minute and a half. And I think he broke his rib and broke maybe his back. And, uh, and went and visited him in the hospital. So I'm trying to kind of connect all the 
all the things that Deontay, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah. that. So I guess that'd be the closest thing I could think of, be Lewis Schmeling too. 